What's up guys, Redness Reviews here with you again, and today we're doing another military surplus rifle unboxing. However, we're starting this video out with a ton of confusion because I ordered one B-grade Mass 4956 from Royal Tiger Imports, and for some reason they sent me three rifle boxes. I'm assuming each one of these boxes contain a French Mass 4956 rifle, but to be honest, I have absolutely no clue, so we will find out in this video. Before we check out what RTI sent us, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like seeing this military surplus firearm centric content here on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. And let me know down in the comments if you've ever had an RTI order so screwed up. So this order from Royal Tiger Imports was supposed to be a single refurbished B-grade Mass 4956 from France. I'm assuming at least one of these three boxes contain the rifle I ordered. I suppose our first course of action will be just to open all three and see what we got. We will be doing this box opening with a bayonet. If you know what rifle this bayonet goes to, let me know about that down in the comments. I have double and triple checked to make sure that I only ordered one rifle. So far, I've only been charged for one. Lots of packing peanuts in this one. I've never done any kind of promotional content with RTI or any other firearms company for that matter. So the only explanation for this mix-up is something on RTI's side. A warehouse mix-up, system issue, who knows. Well, our first rifle here is most certainly a Mass 4956. And holy crap, this thing is gorgeous. This this is one of their professionally refurbished examples with brand new wood, but despite that refurbishment, for whatever reason, these rifles are still in B-grade condition, which comes with a pretty substantial discount. Before we get into the specifics of this example, let's get those other two open. Uh, I can tell you right now, something ain't right with this one. That's not a Mass 4956. It looks like this is one of their moniker, M95 straight pull rifles. Judging by that handguard, I'm going to guess this one is in B-grade condition. It is a full length long rifle, and this particular example was made in Budapest. Pretty cool, no doubt, but I certainly didn't order it. And our third rifle is yet another Milserp. Looks like we have one of their Swiss Smith Rubin designs. This one is a K11 carbine, and it looks to have come with both a sling and a sight protector. I'm absolutely stumped as to why they would have sent me this. I ordered one rifle and end up with three different ones. Since the mass 4956 was supposed to be the subject of this video. This is the rifle we'll be focusing on. As for the other two rifles here, I suppose it's content for the channel, so I will do individual videos on each of these to let you guys know what kind of condition they were in, and then I'll contact RTI and see what they want to do about this mix-up. So back to our mass 4956 rifle. Looks like they do include a magazine even with these B-grade examples. The Mass 4956 is fed from a 10 round detachable box magazine with a pretty interesting little side lever to keep it in the rifle. On the exterior of this magazine, we can see where there was some pitting in the past, but it looks like their refurbishment of this rifle included the magazine as well because that rust and pitting seems to have been blued over. RTI's Mass 4956 rifles are chambered in the original 7.5 French cartridge. These days, 7.5 French is pretty hard to get your hands on and it's pretty expensive when you do find it, but PPU loads factory new brass for it. And if I'm not mistaken, the bullets are standard 30 caliber .308 diameter projectiles. So I don't suspect it would be that hard to reload for. There's not really much to say about this wood. I mean, it is absolutely perfect in almost every single way. It is new manufactured wood, after all, which might subtract a little bit from the history of these particular rifles. The Mass 4956 is a French military surplus battle rifle from the Cold War era. At some point, these rifles made their way into the hands of the Ethiopians in Africa, where they saw pretty extensive use and abuse. And so I suppose Royal Tiger Imports decided to invest both the time and the money into making this particular batch of rifles a little bit more pretty. On the receiver of the rifle here, we can see some old pitting that has been covered up by new bluing. There's little dings and nicks on the top cover. Royal Tiger has these rifles in both standard condition and B-grade condition. Apparently the B-grade condition rifles have something wrong with the grenade launching hardware on the front end. The listing said that the launchers could be missing or possibly loose. Let's we'll see if this one functions. So we fold up our gas cutoff. And then that should allow us to deploy the little sight here. That sight has two positions, a lower position and a higher position. That seems to lock into place as it should, so I don't see anything wrong with that necessarily. This metal ring with button is the adjustment for distance. And although it does seem pretty gritty and hard to press, with a little bit of force, it does lock in on each 
individual increment. So that seems to function as it should. There is a lot of sand in there though. So it's looking like despite that refurbishment, this rifle needs good cleaning still. Our import marking is on the underside of the barrel. IO Incorporated, Melbourne, Florida, and it's been blued over, so it's quite difficult to see. The front end of the rifle here has all new bluing and looks to be in really nice shape, despite being a little bit dirty. I'm a little bit concerned about the fitting of this buttstock, though. See that rattling back and forth? It appears to be a little bit loose. It certainly shouldn't be that way. When we pull back on the bolt without a magazine installed, it should drop this little spring-loaded lever, allowing the bolt to fall. But in the case of this rifle, that's not happening, so I'll do that manually. Depress that and then the action does close. The bluing on the bolt carrier looks all new. This bolt knob is a new replacement. In original Mass 4956 rifles, this is one of the first parts to break. This fitment with the stock and the receiver really doesn't seem right. Maybe tightening some screws will make that better, but I doubt it. The 4956 is a direct gas impingement design. So when a round is fired, a little bit of gas goes into the gas block, down the gas tube, blowing the bolt back, and cycling the action. Let's remove our top cover here. It is under spring tension, so this can be a difficult process. So that's the guide rod. The top cover does include the rear sight, recoil spring, bolt carrier, which looks to be in outstanding condition, and our bolt itself. The firing pin on these Mass 4956s is one of the parts that wear out. When these rifles were newly issued to French troops, they included replacement firing pins from the very beginning. Everything's nicely reblued, but there is a smear of rust on the firing pin. I'm guessing that's coming from the inside of the bolt here. These surfaces certainly need to be cleaned before shooting, because if these components are not working 100% perfectly, the Mass 4956 poses a huge danger of slam fires. The inside of the receiver looks all fresh and new. These rifles are a milled steel construction, so they are super solidly built. So the rifle looks really good externally. That's all well and good, but if the bore is trash, the rifle is trash. So let's get a closer look at that. Oh boy, that bore is rough. You can see the rifling, but it is heavily pitted and extremely dark. Not at all what you want to see. These rifles are equipped with a muzzle brake. I would like to do a bullet muzzle test for you guys, but since we have this muzzle brake, there's really no way to do so. So this rifle has been made to look pretty, but it is far from perfect. I'm not sure which issue specifically got it its B-grade rating, but the bore looks like crap. The bolt does not lock back as it should, and the fitment of this stock is far from acceptable. So I suppose B-grade sounds about right. RTI's going rate on these is about 600, which I think is a few hundred less than their standard grade example. I picked this one up on a recent promotion where they were offering free shipping and 10% off. So my total was about 540, which seems pretty reasonable for a Cold War era military surplus battle rifle. Most other battle rifles fetch a far higher price on the market these days, whether it be M14, M1 Garand, G3, set me. Heck, even SKS at this point. In general, the Mass 4956 is a rifle that I see appreciating in value over time, even though they do have that issue of ammo availability. Due to the issues this one has, I can't give the RTI examples a 100% recommend. Yes, they seem to be decently priced, but they have some pretty serious issues to overcome, so it might be worth trying to find one of these rifles on the collector market, as opposed to from RTI, even if you are going to pay a bit of a premium. The next step on this rifle will be a full, in-depth, deep dive review video, where we'll get it ready for the range by taking it down and giving it a good cleaning and then get it out to the range and shoot it to see how it performs and answer that question of whether or not they are worth the about $600 they're asking. So be sure to stay tuned to the channel for that. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. That helps out with the algorithm and getting it distributed out to other viewers. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future military surplus firearms content. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this specific RTI rifle. And when I find out what RTI wants to do about the other two rifles they sent me, I'll let you guys know. I will catch you in the next video. See you then. Peace.